Working in a virtual reality lab, um, we have a head-mounted display called the Oculus Rift. Um, so you can put this on, and so on the TV you see the, the right and the left eye. Um, but when you put the actual head-mounted display on, it displays in 3D, so it looks like you're really in there. Uh, you get a good sense for how big things are. There are a lot of designs where, I mean, you can look at it on a computer screen, but you don't really get a good understanding for how big it is until you either see it in real life or you can go stand in our motion capture system and actually walk around the equipment and get a good sense for how big it is. Um, so we're using head-mounted displays like this. Uh, we also have a motion capture system in our technology lab as well as a cave, which is uh, three walls and a floor with projectors behind them. And you put on 3D glasses and you can uh, look at various different types of geometry and it also syncs up the, the views based on where you're looking. So if there's a panel that you want to look at, you can actually bend down and look underneath the panel and it'll rotate the views as if you were actually looking underneath a real panel. And so with all these new different types of virtual technology, we can practice everything in a virtual world before we actually have to do it on the shop floor. Basically anything that you're going to shoot off into space has an incredible amount of work that goes into it. We have very specific needs for our technology. Um, as Gary was saying, very, very tight tolerances. So when you make a satellite, there are two pieces that go together. There's a core and a system module, and you actually have to mate them vertically together. And when you're doing that, you're, you're getting millimeters of clearance between one very important part and another very important part. And you have to be careful when you're doing that not to hit anything, not to bump anything. And so you need to make sure that your technicians on the floor can actually see what they're doing. And so we can bring people into our lab and we can set up a scenario like that and they can actually practice the, the mate of a spacecraft multiple times over and over again. They can find the best positions that they need to stand. If a technician is standing on this platform, can I reach everything I need to? Can I see everything I need to? The, a lot of the technology that we use now is very common in the gaming industry. And so all the video games you are starting to use the, the virtual headsets like this. Um, the motion capture technology they use in making movies like Avatar, and we're using the exact same technology in our lab right now. Um, the actual modeling has been around for quite a while, uh, but they use it for anything from designing a spacecraft to modeling a new facility to making actual characters for a new a game or movie. I personally don't do a lot of the, the 3D modeling myself. We'll, we'll do some on occasion, but we usually get most of our models directly from the engineers. Um, but then we will overlay textures if we need to. We'll make simulations, which is I guess a more technical term for an actual animation, it's, it's the same idea. Um, we'll set up scenarios like this, animate camera paths so you can walk through the, the facility and, and see what all is there. So we're looking at two new, well, new for us game engines right now um, called Unity and Unreal. Those are both used heavily in the video game design world right now. Um, so we don't quite have all of our scenarios in there yet, but we are looking into it. Most of our uh, motion capture systems are done in a program called WorldViz, or Vizard, uh, WorldViz is the company, um, and that is all actually Python-based coding. And so uh, most of those are throw in the geometry, figure out what you want to do, and then code the rest of it. So I never did any coding um, in middle school or high school, I'd never done any of it. Uh, my first experience in coding was probably my second semester in college and I initially learned C and then I had one semester of C, uh, never used it again, used MATLAB throughout college and then now I'm using exclusively Python here um, for our motion capture. So once you learn one coding system it's, it's pretty easy to transfer over to another. Um, you can learn all of the basic concepts and then it's just a matter of learning the new language.